get you some. Oh, yeah. Mate, it's lucky she can cook. Wow! G'day, lovelies. Welcome back. All right, you ready for this one? Vanilla sauce. Okay, first thing we're going to do is preheat our ovens to 180 degrees Celsius. We want to get out two sheets of puff pastry to thaw out. I'll write the recipe below as always. Oven's hot, pastry thawed out. Next thing we need is a square cake tin. Now you can either cook your pastry like that and then try and cut it to size after. But what I like to do is cut it to roughly size now. And then after if I have to I can just trim some edges off and it just makes it a lot easier. And I'm just going to cut out around it. Now, once I have done that, I just cut a little corner, the little corners off because my tin isn't exactly like pointy square and it just helps it to sit in. Now, if I have to, I'll just have to trim a little bit off and it just makes it a lot easier. Then I'm going to sit it on the other one and just cut that to the same size. So I'll just make an indent in the plastic. Once we've got it on the baking paper, we want to put another piece on top. I'm going to sit another baking tray on top of that. If you don't have another baking tray, just get an, um, like a metal oven dish or something that will fit in there and just sit it on top. It's just to stop it from rising right up. It will still rise a little bit, but not right up. Now our oven should be hot enough. We want to bang them in there. My electric oven, it takes exactly 20 minutes. While the first one's baking, grab your square cake tin, put a little bit of butter in, then stick in a piece of baking paper. Now make sure it's big enough that we can grab it on both sides and pull it out when we're finished and set that aside. Alrighty, 20 minutes later, take our top off. First one's ready, set it aside somewhere. Put our second one on. Same thing again, cook it for 20. Now we'll cut this one down to fit. So a serrated knife is usually the best one to use for things like this. So I'll just have a look. Ooh, just a fraction off of that side. Now I've trimmed the edges off. I've got it sitting in there perfect. Now once I've done that, I'm going to actually cut it now. So I'm going to cut in half. All right, and then I'm going to try and even as I can, which I can never can. Look, I didn't even get that even. <laughs> as I reckon, I'm going to make it into six vanilla slices. Now, once I've done that, we can set it aside till later when we need it. Oh, I didn't get them even as usual. <laughs> so I like doing it this way because it's so much easier to try and slice it up later than if you leave it whole. Now, to make our custard, the first thing we need is six egg yolks. So I've got six eggs there and I'm going to separate them. Alrighty, once we've separated them, I'm going to cover the egg whites up and chuck them in the fridge and I might make a meringue or something like that with them later. And the egg yolks, we're just going to sit aside till we need them. Now into a mug, we're going to put half a cup of water and a third of a cup of corn flour. And we're going to mix that in really well together and set that aside for a minute. Now we get out a medium saucepan and we want to chop 60 grams of butter into there. Now we want to add one and a half cups of milk. Now we add one and a half cups of cream. I'll just get this cream. It doesn't really matter what cream you get. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract and two thirds of a cup of caster sugar. Now I forgot to say before too, you need to whisk those egg yolks with a fork, the ones we've got setting aside. All right, now we've done that, we want to put our saucepan on the stove top on a medium heat. We want to constantly stir it and we want to bring it up to a boil. As soon as it starts to boil, take it straight off. Okay, so it's just starting to boil, so we take it straight off. Leave your stove top on for a minute. Okay, now give your corn flour and water a good mix. And stick it in there. Start mixing really well. Get your eggs, put them in. Keep mixing really well. Now you can use a, um, uh, you can use a whisk if you want, but I like using a fork. All right, we mix really well until it's all in. Now, as you can see, it's starting to thicken already. So now what we want to do is we want to put it back onto our stove top. 
we want to bring it up to the boil as soon as it starts boiling we keep stirring the whole time as soon as it starts boiling we just want to stir it and it only takes about a minute once it starts to boil to thicken up and then we take it straight back off Alrighty, a minute later we've got it nice and thick now now we grab our tin and pour it in And now we want to sit them on top. All right, now I'm going to leave it sit there for about 20 minutes to cool down a little bit. It will still be warm. After 20 minutes, you want to put a tea towel in your fridge and then you want to put it, sit it on top of your tea towel. Or you can like that without being covered for four hours. Alrighty, it's four hours later and now we're going to make the icing for the top. Now this is optional. If you want, you can leave them how they are, cut them up and dust them with icing sugar. Or you can do this. So in a bowl, I've got two and a half cups of icing sugar. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now you can use two tablespoons of soft butter or margarine. I always use marge. And to start with, I'm going to use two tablespoons of milk. And if we need to, we can always add more. But you can never take it out. Best way to mix it in is just to push down with the spoon. Alright, that worked out perfect. We've got this thick paste. Okay, now what we want to do is get out a saucepan that this can come, that your get a heat proof bowl, that it can comfortably sit in. And then put your kettle on and boil it. Whack some boiling water in there. Don't let it touch the bowl, but let it get close. Sit our bowl on top. And now we just want to melt it down so it's nice and runny and easy to pour in our slice. Now once we've melted it down enough, and we've got it nice and runny like a so, ready to go. The next thing we'll do is just leave it on there, is grab out some desiccated coconut and a spoon and grab our slice. Now after four hours, our slice is probably set, but I'm going to give it the extra hour because if you pull it out and start cutting it up, it's a pain in the ass to get it back in if it's not set. It probably is set, but it just doesn't hurt to give it that one extra hour. Okay, so now we've got our slice ready. We're going to get our icing and we're going to put it on. <laughs> And we're going to spread it all over. I've, I've left it the way to try and remember how I've cut it. <laughs> okay, now we want to get our desiccated coconut. And we want to sprinkle it all over. As little or as much as you like. Once you've covered it all, you can just gently run your spoon along the top and even it out. I'm now going to chuck it back in the fridge for an hour. Oh yeah, oh yeah baby. It's an hour later. All right, grab those sides, lift it out. Peel her back. All right, I'll just gently go through first. Then I'll go down to the bottom and cut it hard. Now you have to clean your uh, knife in between each cut. Alright, we've all had some and it's bloody beautiful, but you know me and my OCD, it's not perfect. So there's two things I'm going to change which I write in the recipe below. So when we're doing the vanilla custard and I put two teaspoons of vanilla extract in, I'm going to change it to four teaspoons. You need a little bit of that more vanilla taste. And with the icing on the top, it was way too thick because it's really, really sweet. But I can't really change the recipe because I reckon you're going to need just a little bit over half anyway. So I'll leave the recipe the same, but just put a thin layer of that icing on and then your coconut and you're going to have the most perfect vanilla slice ever. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have yourselves an awesome Arvo and I'll catch us really soon. Toodles!